If you have a Mr. Bullet Feeder and you want to switch from one caliber to another, you're going to need a caliber conversion kit like this. In this video, I'm going to show you what's included and how to perform that caliber changeover. Hey there, Gavin Gu here from UltimateReloader.com. This video is actually part two in a two-part series. The first part was focused on solving the issue we have in station number four on the Dillon XL750. Double Alpha Academy has an extra short powder bar that resolves a clearance issue. And I wanted to keep that video contained to that specific product. This video is gonna be focused more generally on, you've got a Mr. Bullet Feeder. This one here is set up for nine millimeter. I've shown this on the channel with the Mark 7 Evolution and with the Dillon RL1100. Now we wanna load some 45 ACP. We need a kit like this. These kits will allow you to go from basically one class of bullet diameter to another. And the kits are available for 9mm and 38 Super, 10 and 40, which are the same bullet diameter, same bullets in many cases, 45, which is the one that I have, 556 five, and 223. We've got 762 slash 308 and 65 by 55. So what I wanted to do is get this bag open. We'll take a look at what is included in the kit. And then I'm going to go through the process of performing that changeover. So we've got the product card. This just indicates what is included, which model we have here, and gives you an idea of what things look like there. There is a specific expander that works with the Dillon powder measure. This has a slightly different profile. It's gonna help those bullets seat just right in a case. This is gonna flare them so that the bullet drop die has a perfect drop action. Speaking of the dropper, that's what we've got here. We've got a complete dropper assembly for 45 caliber. We also have the bullet feed plate that goes in the motorized collator bolt. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the double alpha magnetic powder check. I'm gonna get my cedar and crimper combined in station number five get the dropper installed, and then we'll pick up from there. I've got multiple videos. If you click on that first link in the video description, I've got those stories that I mentioned with the Evolution and with the RL1100, and I covered the dropper setup and some of the other setup and configuration details in depth in those stories. So I'll refer you to those videos and those articles for more info there. So I'll be back when I get my dies reconfigured. I just finished swapping out dies and configuring all of the die setups for this XL750 Mr. Bullet Feeder setup. I started by removing the cedar and the crimper, which were in stations number four and number five, and then I turned my attention to the powder measure. We need to swap out the factory Dillon powder through expander for the special profile Mr. Bullet Feeder powder through expander that comes with this caliber conversion kit. I loosened the clamp, removed the return rod, and I found that if you just hit the bottom of this powder through expander, you can actually pop it up, and if you're real clever, you can actually catch it and then put the other one in. It doesn't take but a few moments to pull the pins on the tool head and invert the tool head to get that out, but uh, a little bit quicker if you do it that way. I put the powder measure back together and I noticed that I was over expanding the case mouths. So I had to raise the powder die a little bit to lessen that expansion until I got it just right. It's gonna be kind of barely visible, but when you put a bullet in, you'll see it kind of drop in and just stick. It's not gonna tip or anything like that. So I got that perfect. Then in station number three, there's the double alpha magnetic powder check die. I swapped the plungers that was set up for rifle on another press that I had set up with it, put the pistol plunger in, got the height set accordingly. Again, I've got multiple videos that show all of the nuance of setting up this powder check die. Then in station number four, I installed the included dropper die, the bullet drop die. And all you really need to do here is get a flared case in that station, station number four in this particular case. Insert some bullets after you start the die down in until you can see the stack visible in this clear window here. Then I raised the carriage to the top of the stroke so that the case was activating the die as I was screwing it down where it got close enough to touch. And then as you're screwing it down, once you see that stack of bullets drop, you're gonna increase the depth another quarter to half 
of a turn and then lock the die in. Very easy to set up. If we have any problems, we can just raise or lower the die accordingly. Then in station number five, I grabbed an RCBS combo cedar crimper. Raised the cedar plug and then put a piece of factory ammunition in station number five. Raised the carriage, cranked it down until I could feel some good resistance and gave it a little bit more. We're gonna work on that crimp first. It's kind of a feel thing. Once you're happy with how the crimp feels, and again, this is an iterative process. Typically, you're gonna run that cedar plug down and give it a good crank. After that, you're gonna to wanna to check your crimp with these Bears plated bullets. It's a little bit softer core, a little bit thinner jacket compared to a traditional jacketed bullet. So you have to be a little bit careful because you can over squeeze them a little bit, which I did do initially. I backed it off a little bit, rechecked my seating depth by running the plug down against a bullet in a factory cartridge. And then I found both the cedar and the crimper to be perfectly adjusted. Now we can focus our attention on the collator, the drop tube, and get everything configured for our high volume reloading session. And before I get going on the rest of the steps, I'm gonna hold this ratchet back, to give us a little bit of a shake. I find that this is actually the easiest way to get the, the feed plate out. And then drop the 45 feed plate in. We're gonna hold this ratchet back, okay. So now I'm gonna hang the bowl on the case feeder. I'm gonna check my drop tube. We're gonna get the adapter swapped out with the micro switch for the shot off and perform our final steps. So the bullet feed bowl and the spring drop tube are now completely dialed in. I actually went back and read the instructions once again to make sure that I understood exactly how to get this all dialed in. So I took the bullet feed bowl and I hung it off the side of the case feed bowl that's a part of the Dillon XL 750. I kind of swung it in towards kind of over the powder measure so that the output tube is kind of right over station number four. This is a really good setup. I really like how this is positioned. And when I read through the instructions, I took this protractor at 45 degrees here and that's your initial set point for the angle of the bowl is 45 degrees. Could be down to 42 degrees, could be up at 48 degrees. It's gonna be somewhere in that sweet spot. Then it's time to turn our attention to the nose guide and the flip ramp. And let me show you exactly what I did here. So what you want is for a bullet that's sweeping by to not fall into the nose guide if it's in its correct orientation, and if it's inverted, you do want it to fall into the nose guide. And we'll see this if I take the uh, variable speed control and we feed a few here. Okay, so there's one, it falls down in. This one does not fall in. And what I had to do was get the nose guide plates stacked so that a nose down bullet, the base is just below the top of the feed plate. And that's gonna get the height just perfect. And then we got to get the in and out setting dialed in so that a correctly oriented bullet does not fall down into the nose guide, but a nose first bullet does. Then you want to make sure that your flip ramp is in its proper in and out orientation as well. I didn't really have to change that. It's kind of hugging the sub plate down there. And these Hollow point bullets, because of their profile, are kind of one of the harder bullets to tune in. All, the real critical adjustment here was the in out on the nose guide so that I would get a nose for, first bullet to fall down in and then a correctly oriented bullet not falling in. Okay, I'm gonna turn up the speed a little bit there. So with the angle set correctly, with the nose guide set correctly, correct stacked amount of plates, correct in and out, and the flip ramp correctly set up, this bullet feed setup should be nearly bulletproof. I'd say it's time for some loading. We've got cases, we've got powder, we've got primers. I just loaded some more with the Prima Fill. Just did a video on that. You'll wanna check that out if you haven't already. We've got bullets in the bullet feed bowl and I have not tried this yet. So what I thought I'd do is run up the press. Oh yeah, I gotta take my case feed shut off off here and we'll see if we have any issues. If we do, we'll make the appropriate adjustments to get everything running right.
Okay, here's the magic moment. Hey, we've got a bullet there. Double checking everything. Looks good. Okay. And we've got we've got bullets flowing. Now that is how loading should be. Wow, okay, that was one continuous loading session. This thing is absolutely running perfectly. I love this loading setup. My arm might get a little bit tired, but as long as I'm adding bullets as in cases and powder and keeping primers filled, we are gonna be good to go. I could not be happier with this setup. The XL750 is greatly improved over the 650. Now that I've got my Mr. Bullet Feeder and the extra short powder charge bar from Double Alpha Academy. Everything is completely dialed in. The magnetic powder check is a great safety feature as well. My question for you is what did you think? Do you like this video? Do you like this setup? Give it a thumbs up. Do you have something to say? Do you have questions? Do you have feedback based on your own bullet feeder setup on a 650 or 750? Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. Also, don't forget to subscribe with notifications because we've got the Progressive Press shootout coming up and a whole bunch other related cool content. Links in the video description. I'm on Patreon. Any support you could provide would be greatly appreciated. I've got Ultimate Reloader shirts at the Ultimate Reloader store and that first link in the video description will link to the article with more details, pictures, links to product pages and so on and so forth. As always, thank you for watching. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.